You don't always need a trophy to stand out in the crowd. Yes, you do. Class president, football star, class favorite, and undefeated chess champion. Yeah, Chris wasn't any of those things. School race. Chris was a great runner. He could do this. The race was on. He was in the lead and doing a fine job. Fast as fuck, boy. It looked like Alex would be getting second place. He was running so hard his face was turning red. It looked like Alex really, really wanted to win the race. Chris slowed down just a little bit so Alex could win. That was okay. Chris could get an award some other way. Do you see him? How about now? Did you see him then? Maybe that time? What about then? Of course, Zombie Cat doesn't actually appear and disappear like that. What Zombie Cat does is more like... Alex was scared of Zombie Cat. Alex was also scared of carrots. Especially carrots that looked like Zombie Cat. But luckily that only happened in his dreams. Good morning, she would say. Meh. Good morning, she would say. Meh. Good morning, she would say. She spent a whole hour on this card just for Mr. Buckle. Beautiful. She knocked. He answered. She delivered. He opened. He threw away. So Diana and Franny tried even harder, even making a card for Gum, the neighborhood bully. God wants you to be nice, it said. That was Franny's idea. Gum liked it. No way he hated it. Gum never seemed shorter than nine feet high. Metal guns are bought. Stop! Why are you so fucking good at modeling fury. robots? No alien finally came, and it was time for their carnival. Remy and Franny were very excited. Alex arrived on the scene with his wagon of robots to watch the event. He was more interested in playing than helping, but when he saw how much work Chris and Diana had done, he felt bad that he'd been so selfish. While Chris and Diana had been thinking about others, Alex had just been thinking about himself. But it seemed too late to help now. Joe was cooking up hamburgers for the kids. Not many people talked to Mr. Buckle, except for Chris. The next time Chris considered just not saying a prayer, at least then he wouldn't get laughed at. Chris and Mr. Buckle played their game. Chris lost. Everyone laughed. And... <coughs> By now, Chris felt very discouraged and didn't feel like he was making a difference at all. Mr. Buckle wasn't going to change. Chris started to just turn around and leave, but he stopped and prayed that God would give him strength. Chris turned and went inside. Mr. Buckle seemed different this time. He'd had a very bad week and was very sad. Mr. Buckle's friends didn't like him when he was sad, so they weren't there. His family wasn't there for him either. They were too busy with other things. And Mr. Buckle's money couldn't make him feel any better either. He had no one and Chris saw how lonely he really was. Chris took out his sandwich and said a prayer. Mr. Buckle didn't make fun of him this time. In fact, Mr. Buckle closed his eyes too. All of those other weeks, Chris's visit hadn't meant anything to him, but today it meant everything. Chris was there after everyone else had left, and Mr. Buckle was starting to learn that God would always be there too. As for Chris, he was starting to learn that sometimes all you have to do is keep praying for your sandwich. Supersonic 705. Supersonic 705. Piss. Let's get some pussy tonight.